Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video we are tracking the remnants of Milton, Leslie, and 94L out by the Cabo Verde Islands for possible development into an, a storm next week as well as looking at the Western Caribbean as well. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin, thanks to TropicalTivits.com, for Thursday, October 10th, 2024. The red arrows pointed towards the remnants of Milton after making landfall last night in with the west coast of Florida around 10, 11 o'clock last night. We have the pink arrow is now Tropical Storm Leslie downgraded just recently from a hurricane. I'll show you why in a, in a minute. And then we have Invest 94L by the Cabo Verde Islands in purple, a tropical wave just coming off the coast of Africa. So here's our vorticity, spin and energy in the atmosphere associated with all of our tropical entities. So we have Milton near Florida. Then we have what was Disturbance 1 yesterday, uh, just to the southeast of Bermuda and dissipated because of high wind shear. Same thing happened to Milton, high wind shear, caused it to go post-tropical. We still we have a high wind shear near Leslie, which is causing it to become a tropical storm instead of a hurricane. And then we have two tropical waves in the main development region that we're tracking, plus one in the eastern Caribbean. One of those is 94L. So here is the latest satellite image of Milton. The high wind shears completely exposed the low pressure system, so we no longer have a hurricane, which we did just a few hours ago. Winds are 70 miles an hour, moving quick east at 21 miles an hour, should stay to the south of Bermuda, and uh, can just completely dissipate in a few days. Here is the latest satellite image of Tropical Storm Leslie. Its uh, low pressure system is also now becoming exposed, as you can see here. So it's potential this could become a post-tropical system as well if thunderstorm action activity can't restain itself near that low pressure system. So we have right now at winds of 70 miles per hour with this storm as well, moving northwest at 8 and will eventually make its way towards the Azores Islands by the time we get to early next week as a post-tropical system as well. And then we have Inves 94L right by the Cabo Verde Islands. This one has a 20% chance of developing over the next two days as well as over the next seven days. But this one we have to also track because if it doesn't develop here, its energy could survive the trek across the main development region and redevelop near the Caribbean islands, as you can see here with the spaghetti track guidance models and in the model intensity guidance. So let's look at the models and see where this storm can go, as well as our next threat in the Western Caribbean, where we've seen a lot of our storms develop this year. So this is the GFS model, 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity, the spin and energy in the atmosphere, about 5,000 feet up from the surface of the water. And the red hexagon is Milton, pink is Leslie, and purple is 94L. High wind shear environments around all of them are keeping them from either strengthening or developing at the moment. And here's the moisture content, a lot of dry air in the Atlantic right now. Two days from now, on Saturday, October 12th, we see that Milton's remnants are still lingering around just south of Bermuda. Leslie is trying to hold on, on on its way towards the Azores Islands, and 94L is still a broad area of circulation just to the west now of the Cabo Verde Islands. We do still see a large amount of wind shear in and around Invest 94L with an upper level low elongated just to its west. So that's going to keep a lot of that moisture from collecting itself, hampering some development. As you can see here, dry air infusing into that low pressure system with a lot of its moisture still back by Africa. But if you look in the Western Caribbean and Southern Caribbean, we have the Central American gyra really cranking up the moisture once more. 
and all that moisture does take time to consolidate, but this model wants to do it pretty quickly. As you can see, by the time we get to day five, we start to see a vorticity max forming just to the east of Nicaragua, which I've highlighted by our black hexagon. We have our 94L moving through the middle of the main development region in purple. And then we have another tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa with the vorticity max in blue. So if we look at the upper level environment five days from now on Tuesday the 15th, we see an upper level ridge starting to form in the Western Caribbean. We have one over our new tropical wave on this model run. And then we have an upper level low just to the west of 94L. So that will hamper its development as it continues moving westward because that's going to have high wind shear environments. But the other two will start to see decreasing wind shear. So that's going to allow their moisture bubbles to maintain themselves a little bit more. Then we get to a week from now, next Thursday, October 17th. And we now we start to see the formation of another tropical storm potentially in the Western Caribbean by our black hexagon. 94L is getting, still holding that uh, energy together, but not really organizing it just yet uh, as it approaches the Caribbean islands just to the south of our Bermuda Azores High. And our blue tropical wave is south of the Cabo Verde Islands trying to get organized. Both of those storms have the upper level ridge overhead. So again, that has that low wind shear environment. 94L is heading towards a higher wind shear environment, especially if th this Western Caribbean storm forms, it's gonna have some outflow, which might hamper it as well. But it's maintaining some moisture as it approaches the Caribbean. And once it does that, potentially we see the vorticity concentrate. And depending on the track of the storm, uh, if it goes over the islands or not, will determine if that forms 10 days from now on Sunday, October 20th, where we do see maybe our next Western Caribbean storm also not only forming near Central America, but crossing the Yucatan Peninsula into the Gulf of Mexico. Because we'll have a high pressure system off the east coast of the United States pushing everything westward once again towards the Gulf. So we'll see if that is the case. Again, this is, take this for a grain of salt. Took out, look how long it took for Helene and for Milton to form. Let's see if this model run has this correct or not to see if we have our next storm form. Next name on the list will be Nadine. So here's the European model. You can track 94L moving across the main development region. Has chances in, along the way of developing but really doesn't do so. We also see the energy in the Western Caribbean cross into the Gulf of Mexico, but doesn't really develop. So we'll keep an eye on it. Right now the GFS is being bullish. European model's not quite on board yet, but there is a couple of mo uh, models, members there on the Ensemble models, as you can see on the left. European model is a little bit more bullish on 94L developing as it gets into the Eastern Caribbean versus the GFS model. And then we'll keep an eye on that blue tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa in about a week's time. Uh, pretty soon that's going to start, those tropical waves will start to wane as that season's coming to an end near the Cabo Verde Islands. And all of our focus should be on the Western Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico uh, from this point going, from the middle of October going forward. So we'll keep an eye on it just in case though. So Helene is now post-tropical, heading out into the Atlantic, should stay south of Bermuda. Leslie is gonna curve towards the Azores Islands, should be post-tropical by the time it gets there. 94L, if it doesn't develop near the Cabo Verde Islands could redevelop again near the Caribbean Islands, so we'll keep an eye on this one. And then we have a couple of tropical waves interacting with the Central American Gyra. Let's see if that sparks our next system as the models are suggesting. Next name on the list is Nadine. If all three of these entities were to develop, as we see on the models, we could see also Oscar and Patty. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on deciphering weather. 
So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.